Louisiana Beer Reviews looks at Covington Brew House's Spring Pale Ale. Introduced way back in 2015, it is a spring ale, but it's really available in the winter, February to May, winter and spring, late winter and spring. Uh, gets no score on Beer Advocate with two whole reviews. No score on Rape Beer with zero re reviews as of this point, March 2015. They use three malts and four bar uh, three barley malts and four hops, which they don't really say what they are. Um, it has an okay label. Covington Brewhouse, just like you know when it was Heiner Brow, under Heinrich Orlick, and then Covington, the, those owners kind of moved him out. To, and I don't know how that went down, but um, they don't have a whole lot of money. They sure don't really advertise, so. You may never see this beer if you don't live in the New Orleans area. Covington is a city, really a town, north of the New Orleans area, north of Lake Pontchartrain, along U.S. Highway 190 and Interstate Highway 12. Uh, there's some t writing on here about springtime, walking in the woods and stuff. Um, I've never had it. I bought this at Aquista Paces. Damn. Forgot. Oh. Thought I forgot my bottle over. I was going to have to restart it again. Which happens more than you think. I don't edit the videos really. I just reshoot them a lot. You might see some uh, Heinerbrau beers around, still labeled Heinerbrau, but it's all becoming Covington. They're trying to, they trying, listen to that terrible language that I'm speaking over here. They're trying to branch out and cover all the styles, whether winter warmer, a Kolsch, an Oktoberfest beer, an IPA, a Pale Ale, etc. Et Here's Covington Ponch Train Pilsner, been on the market a few years. Refreshing as a gentle lake breeze, and I'll go along with that because it's pretty mild. And uh, other pale ales, McSorley's Irish Pale Ale. Now McSorley's Tavern in New York City and Manhattan has been open since 1854, believe it or not. Um, and Pabst handles the production for this. Um, Irish Tavern. They also make a black lager. They used to sell the, the McSorley's Pale Ale and the black lager around here, but it's pretty much gone. I don't guess people were buying it. I used to like to get it. To get it, I thought it was very well made. The both both of them. But I went to New York City and I didn't drink there. I walked in, looked around. They have like sawdust on the floor. It's a really old timey bar. They didn't even let women go in there until 1970 under court order that court order they didn't want to let women in women in um, if I go to New York City again though I really need to go and drink some beer there I know it's a tourist trap and it'll be overpriced but the point of this is that um, I think the McSorley's pale ale is more authentic a lot of these pale ales people complain about them because they say they taste just like IPAs it's like why don't it's almost like you can't distinguish between the pale ale and the IPA. Michelob did a pale ale, which I thought was more authentic. That didn't last. I kept some caps. Um, let's see if this is authentic. Like I said, 6%. What's the IBU? Um, 35. That sounds about right. That's where it should be from what I understand about pale ales. India pale ales were just pale ales that they took and they added extra hops so that the beer would be preserved on the trip to India, British India, in the 18, early 1800s. Of course, by the time the beer got to India, the hops would have faded and it had been similar to what they were drinking back in England. But now you got a situation where everything's tasting like uh, hop stupid. <laughs> okay, not much of a head. A little creaminess on the top. Um, it's dank, it's murky, it's golden. Hmm. Looks like Fuller's. It looks like 
uh, old speckled and looks like Abbott Ale. Looks like John Smith's Ale. All right. Um, smells not anything like those. It, okay, this is an interesting beer. Okay, you have to bear with me. This is going to be a tough one. It's very yeasty. It's hoppy, but not in the citrus, pine, pineapple, grapefruit parade that we've been dreading for the last three years. Or not dreading, but becoming so terribly weary of. This does have some British character to an extent. It does have citrus, citrus like tangerine, but it's not overt, it's more covert. Breadiness, bread crust. Oh, this is going to be a fascinating taste, I think. The aroma is really complex and, and, and elaborate. Or as my grandmother would say, she would say, it's exquisite. The taste is exquisite. I think this, and if you know, if you get the Fuller's London Pride, which is sort of, I know it's an English bitter, but I don't think that's that different than a pale ale as it is supposed to be. Um, or the, like I said, the Michelob, but you're never going to see that. Um, I see McSorley's. This beer has this, um, it's like a low profile, mellow, and, and discreet yeasty, bready, barley malt approach. It's like comes at you and then it just fades off into gentleness. <laughs> There's bitterness. You know, you get, you get you're getting the full 35 international bitterness units, but they're not in your face. They're not loud. They're not um, obnoxious. They're subtle. They're um, appropriate. They're, like I said before, gentle. You can imagine this is the first video review for this beer in the world, which it is. Um, um, the mouthfeel is medium to heavy. There's chewiness here. The finish is puckering, dry to the, for the most part. Um, the drinkability is rather high. Um, You know, you may not know, but really this is the kind of beer that you'd almost want to go on for 30 minutes to really extrapolate it. That's not going to really appeal to too many people though, so I'm going to cut it short. But um, this really is a beer that you would want to fuss over or dissect. It's not a pumpkin peach ale, but it is a rather complex, interestingly put together Pale ale. Um, it is not expensive. I don't think I paid but a dollar forty-five. I have the receipt in the drawer. It was not expensive. I think you can see these beers on the shelf at like Piggly Wiggly over there on US 190 west of Covington for about $7.99. A six-pack, maybe $8.50 these days, but they might have a sale $7.99. Um, and you only find it in bottles, maybe on tap somewhere, not cans. Um, Wow. I am very shocked, pleasantly so, because I was expecting eh, run-of-the-mill, run and I think I need to reevaluate all the Covington beers because um, 
it's sort this beer is sort of bringing back memories of the Bayou Bach, the Pontchartrain Pilsner. Those beers are so um, subtle and nuanced that you, at first approach or first sampling, you don't pick them up, and you and you, you might under evaluate it, or I should say under score it. I don't I don't mean draw a line underneath it. You'll score it too low. Um, man. It's like every sip is an adventure, and I'm, I'm not saying that because, you know, you might say, oh, you're from Louisiana, you're just trying to be a booster, you're trying to um, promote a local brand. That is not the case, because if you watch all my videos, I have, I have at times uh, been pretty critical of some Louisiana brewed beers. Um, but this really is one of the most fascinating Louisiana brands that I have reviewed, and it's certainly one of the best Louisiana it, it may be the best pale ale I've ever had I can tell you right now it does it does beat Dale's pale ale Dale's pale ale is controversial because people will comment they say well you know that's really an IPA and I, I, I tend to agree with that Dale's pale ale comes across as an India pale ale um, you know, I've only done one one video on it. It's the kind of thing, like John Sharon says, you really need to drink at least five to get a handle on it, although there's just not enough time. Um, God, this is the murkiest thing, isn't it? It looks like fruit juice. Um, well, it's fascinating. I'm shocked, to say the least. Um, the yeast character is... This is going to sound bizarre. It is reminding me of Foster's. Because Foster's, and people that aren't into like sitting down for a little while and thinking about it, they'll jump to conclusions and say ridiculous things. Foster's uses a very, very um, specialized yeast strain. Not to mention the Prada Ringwood hops that come from only two farms in Australia, whether Foster's is brewed in America or Australia. And, and so they'll misapprehend Foster's very badly. But um, this does evoke that to some extent. But I'm going to say at a minimum, at a minimum, an A. But I'm going to go and um, go out on a limb and say an A+. plus. This is an outstanding beer. I can't get over it. It's beyond belief, really. Um, if you see it, and chances are, unfortunately, unless you come down here on a trip, you won't see it. I would, in the most... In the strongest, not the most, but in the strongest possible terms, because you wouldn't use most with EST, in the strongest possible terms, get this beer if you see it, buy and try it. I, I would say you're uh, guaranteed to like it. And I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all come on down to the New Orleans metro area. Thank you very much.